Hey everyone on YouTube, thank you for tuning into these videos. Uh, I'm just continuing our series on RNA viruses with this video. It's going to be about the paramyxovirus. So here's a list of all the RNA envelope viruses, and we're going to be working on paramyxovirus. So I wrote here para of M's, and if you look at this, uh, the first five letters here, you see para M. So para of M's is what I'm going for on this one. So we're going to have mumps and measles as part of this discussion. So that's just to help you remember that measles and mumps fall within um, that virus. So we're going to do talk about these different ones. We've got parainfluenza virus, RSV, mumps, and measles, also known as rubiola. So uh, when we talk about parainfluenza virus, I don't want you to confuse it with orthomyxovirus, which is an easy thing to do because the names are so similar. So orthomyxovirus is going to be influenza, and parainfluenza virus is going to be part of paramyxovirus. So you'll get... Sometimes you'll get questions that will, um, in the answer choices, you'll have either influenza and parainfluenza or orthomyxovirus and paramyxovirus. So you got to make sure that you have a good handle on the difference between the two so that you don't, you don't get confused on those types of questions. Okay, so uh, the paramyxovirus is going to be single-stranded RNA. And for this one, we're going to go with a paratroopers theme. So we're going to use paratroopers as our memory aid, because the uh, name starts with para. And so even though paratroopers are in teams, they jump alone. And so we're going to use that to remember that this is a single-stranded RNA. And then also notice they are not segmented, because that's a special trait of influenza. That would be another great question on a test, you know, asking about which viruses have a segmented DNA, and you can definitely count on parainfluenza and influenza both being in the answer choices. Okay, syncytia formation. Uh, this is a word you'll probably see a lot in your studies, syncytia. Uh, that means that they induce cells to form multinucleated giant cells that clump together. So multinucleated giant cells originate from the fusion or division of mononuclear cells. And going back to the paratroopers uh, memory aid, remember that paratroopers are in teams, so they stick together, but then they jump alone, and that reminds us that they're single-strand RNA. Okay, we're moving on to uh, a couple more ideas transmitted by respiratory droplets and direct contact. A croup, uh, which is sometimes called acute laryngotracheobronchitis and pneumonia in children. So you'll see these kind of synonymous. You might question might ask, you know, which of the following viruses has the symptom of acute laryngotracheobronchitis? And you'd have to know that that's parainfluenza. And there's no antiviral therapy or vaccine, unlike um, orthomyxovirus influenza, which was amantadine. Okay, so we're moving on to RSV, also known as respiratory syncytial virus. So here we see that word again, syncytial. So this disease is primarily found in infants, and it's the most common cause of pneumonia and bronchiolitis in infants. And it's also the only one of the paramyxoviruses that lacks the glycoproteins hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, which are those surface proteins. For the treatment of RSV, we're going to use ribavirin. It's used to treat uh, severely ill hospitalized infants. So to remember this a little better, we're going to put a C in front of it so that we have the word crib in there. And the C is for crib or infants. So that's to remind us that this, this medication is going to be used to treat infants and babies. And the R is going to remind us that it's for RSV. Next up is mumps. Okay, so I've got a couple of things here, but these are the two main things that we need to know about mumps. Okay, so of course it's transmitted by respiratory droplets. 
Uh, you see parotitis, 